everybody, uh, it's Evening TV, and today I want to talk to you about forgiveness. And I'm coming from kind of a different perspective than you're probably going to hear most other places. You know, there's this widely held tenet that we really need to forgive in order to move on, in order to put things behind us. We need to forgive. That we're using the term forgiveness to be equivalent to that I want relief. I want to be able to, I want relief. I want to be unburdened from this resentment. But that's different from forgiveness. Forgiveness requires that there is an agreement about what happened. There's an admission about what happened. There's a, the person who, a person has to come and ask for forgiveness. They have to admit what they've done and ask for forgiveness. Well, that's never going to happen in our case. Never going to happen. And so, you know, can you offer forgiveness to a non-repentant wrongdoer? I, well, I don't, I don't think so. But does that mean that you're forever stuck? No, it doesn't. But what you're going to offer them is not forgiveness. They are born evil, right? So we know that something happened to these people, the people that hurt us. Our parents, our nasty ex-spouse, or whoever it is. We know that something happened to hurt them, to damage them. And that, sadly, they are doing the best they can. Because if they could do better, they would do better. And so what we can offer them is compassion. What we can do is we can embrace reality. We can embrace what happened. We can, we can look at things realistically and go, this is what happened. It wasn't my fault. I can forgive myself and I can have compassion for you. And then you can move on, and that's an honest thing to do. And a lot, of the, a lot of times the resentments that we hold, we stay focused on that because the truth is that we feel badly about knowing that. We feel badly for our own participation in it. And a lot of times we'll do that. We will, you know, we might stay focused on our anger at our daughter-in-law's rudeness because we don't want to look at the fact that our son is being passive and letting it happen or you know because it's a more precious relationship something like that but for sure I could stay focused on my ex-husband I could stay focused on things that people have done um, and not have to look at the fact that it was only possible because I was so vulnerable I was so broken and I allowed I, I made it possible for it to happen Granted, he was a bad guy for doing it. He was a bad guy for doing it. They, you know, but still, I, I had a culpability there too. And so that's the part I can forgive. That's the part I can work on because I can face up to that and I can, I can look at it and I go, okay, I was broken. I did the best I could too. You know, we're, we all did the best we could. And that's really hard to accept. It's really, really hard to accept when the best they could do is so bad. I use the word forgiveness sparingly. And really, outside of a context where a person has done some introspection, they've either said or shown me that they have made a change and that they're truly sorry and won't be repeating the, won't be repeating the, the, the damage that they did, won't be repeating it again and again. You know, I don't know what it means to forgive outside of that context. That's, that's, that's what forgiveness is. It comes along together with, with all of that. With the admission of a mistake, with an error, and the promise to not repeat that mistake. A change in behavior, change in attitude. See a person for all that they are. They don't, I don't boil them down to this one act and, you know, resent them forever. I can, I can offer a person compassion for all that they are and love them anyway. Forgiveness is really kind of a moot point. They're not asking for my forgiveness. They don't care about my forgiveness. They're not sorry. They're not about, they're not willing to change anything. They're not, they're not acknowledging that they've made a mistake. They're not coming to me and saying, I won't do it again. I won't, I won't need to make it up to you. I'm sorry. There's none of that. There's absolutely none of that. So my giving them forgiveness is a moot point. They don't care about my forgiveness, right? 
And I can't give them forgiveness for myself because they haven't given me an apology. They haven't given me any kind of change. So that all I can do is accept what is. Accept that I had surrounded myself with broken people. People who did screwed up stuff. People who would do it again if I let them. People who would do it again and again and again. And it had nothing to do with me. It wasn't about me except for the fact that I was vulnerable enough to put myself there. But they didn't do it because I did something wrong. We were victims of something that, that, that they did wrong. But they would do it again. You know? They're not asking me to forgive them for it. What I can do is I can, I can say this is who they are. Something happened to them that broke them, and so they have they are incapable of loving. They are incapable of being protective, nurturing, loving, capable parents and grandparents. That can't be that can't be a good thing for them. Even if they don't even if they don't realize how screwed up that is. Even if they don't realize what a terrible disability they have. They, they still have a terrible disability. I mean, imagine waking up every morning with an overwhelming boredom that plagues your every waking thought. Imagine never being able to enjoy any form of consistency or happiness because of that nagging boredom. Imagine looking at your friends and loved ones, quote unquote, of course, and seeing nothing more than objects to use and dispose of. Yet you see them all as gestures to your daily entertainment. Imagine feeling no connection whatsoever to those people, to anyone, beyond what you can get out of them. Imagine being unable to love, feel vulnerability, to trust, to feel compassion. Imagine that the, high, the highest high you have in life is knowing that you could con somebody and screw them over. You know, destroying your children, destroying people who love you. Imagine that. Imagine if that was that was all you, that was what your life consisted of. That's the best, that's the most happiness that you got was that. Imagine if you just basically couldn't enjoy any of the things, experience any of the beautiful things around us that make life worth living. It makes compassion possible when you can do that. Part of their disability is that they can't, they can't be flawed. They have to be perfect. They have to be okay. And so they can't tell themselves that they, that they're broken and therefore they can't fix it. I mean, it's really a terrible cycle. You can just drive yourself crazy getting too involved in it. You have to just realize it is crazy. It's absolutely crazy making. And you had people that had a crazy sense of entitlement, a crazy sense of self-importance, grew up like that thinking that was normal, and then you trusted yourself to people like that, and, and, and your kids ended up in that situation, and everybody's doing the best that they can. You did the best you could, and sadly, so are they. And so... What can you do? You have to just embrace what is. And once you know better, you do better. That's all you can do. In, 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 with good intentions, you might, someone might try and you know, be talking to you about something that happened and you might say to them, with the intention of wanting them to not be in pain, with wanting them to let it go, you might say something to them like, oh, you know, let it go. It happened such a long time ago. You know, she did the best she could. Can't you just move on? These are really personal things. I think forgiveness is really a very, very personal thing. And that isn't a suggestion I think that any of us should be making to, to each other. Those kinds of things are just as private and personal as they could be. I had a girlfriend whose parents had died. And she was always telling me, that I needed to go talk to my parents because how much she wishes that she'd been able to talk to her parents because her parents were gone. And, you know, there was just no way I could get her to understand. I would have been better off if my parents were gone, you know, that their parents dying would have been infinitely kinder than what their life has meant for me. She didn't understand. It was her frame of reference. And we all, we all have our own frame of reference. And so mainstream advice just does not ever apply to us. And so it can be very isolating, a very isolating feeling. We get some level of relief when we discover that, that these people had a personality disorder. At least it offered us some sort of explanation. And that helped. You know, forgiving ourselves helps. And it is possible to get through and get past, but 
it's not going to happen with some some feigned thing that we're calling forgiveness. And I, I just don't believe that you can have any kind of real forgiveness while the person is out there not claiming they did anything wrong and not asking you for forgiveness. You know, they don't care about forgiveness. What, you can offer yourself forgiveness because you do have an you do have an understanding of what happened and you are sorry about what the things that you did and, and you know how you would change and do things differently now. And you can offer everybody compassion. Passion is really what we're looking for here. Compassion, not forgiveness, is really the key. Okay, you guys, thanks a lot for listening. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, and I will talk with you very, very soon. Bye-bye.